It looks like a Jack Eichel trade might be inching closer. There have been some developments to suggest the Vegas Golden Knights are making another push to possibly acquire the top center. There's also word about some news in Ottawa, potential Eric Brandstrom deal, which we'll discuss. We have news from the NHL waiver wire. We have a fine, as well as some more fallout here from the Blackhawks investigation that happened yesterday. All that and more coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have a variety of things to discuss today. Uh, first, with a few quick news items here. Uh, first off, on the NHL waiver wire, there was nobody on waivers yesterday, so there's no claims or anything like that to talk about today. But we do have one new player on waivers uh, today, which is Tampa Bay Lightning uh, player Remy Ellie. So Remy Ellie will be on waivers today for 24 hours until uh, 2 o'clock Eastern time tomorrow. We'll see if there are any claims. Otherwise, the Lightning have the option uh, to send him down and assign him to uh, uh, their minor league affiliate. So nothing major on the waiver wire here today. Uh, speaking of Tampa, though, we did have news uh, on a Nikita Kucherov injury. We finally have a better idea. Apparently, Kucherov did undergo a surgical procedure to help with the recovery of the injury that he suffered, which looked all, all they're calling it is a lower body injury. They haven't really seen a whole lot more, but it looked like it might be either his leg or a groin area or something to that effect. But whatever it was, he did have to have surgery, and they're estimating 8 to 10 weeks recovery so clearly that'll take him out of action for the remainder of this calendar year uh, he should be able to return likely sometime in january of course the olympics are in february you'd have to assume for a guy like kucherov who you know is certainly one of the top players around uh would love the opportunity to go to the olympics or represent his country of russia so if all goes well and he recovers on time there's no setbacks or he doesn't suffer anything further or additional afterwards he should be on track to be available for that so for those that are thinking that the Kucherov was going to play the LTIR card for the remainder of the season so the Lightning could add another significant player or something that's not going to be the case as we had previously talked about. Uh, we also learned today that Jets captain Blake Wheeler is finally out of COVID protocols. Uh, he's able to uh, rejoin his team uh, who are currently on the road uh, in Anaheim. I believe they're having a skate here today so uh, he's been out of action for some time so they'll be quite content to get him back in action. We also have some news, too, and a quick signing, too. Uh, Alexander Volkov, who went through unconditional waivers with the Ducks to terminate his contract, is actually signed back over in the KHL. So that was what we had suspected was going to happen, and that indeed now is finally official. We also had word from NHL player safety that P.K. Subban has been fined for what they call a dangerous trip, which essentially is basically a slew foot against Calgary Flames forward Milan Lucic. Um, you know, it's funny because when you look at this and he actually gets a fine on this play, it looks eerily similar, almost identical to the Ryan Reeves situation with the New York Rangers not all that long ago. Uh, where there was no discipline of any sort for PK, no penalty or anything like that. Um, and so, you know, PK is obviously a veteran guy, uh, but he's kind of getting a bit of a reputation lately for some of these dirty plays. So we'll see where this goes, but it's just kind of odd in the inconsistency that we often do see sometimes. Um, that To me, the two plays are almost identical. One, there's nothing. This one, there's a fine, but... Certainly the slew foot of all the things you see as one of the uh, things that really drive people crazy and it's really a kind of a dirty play. So hopefully he doesn't uh, continue with that sort of thing. Uh, some more developments from Chicago. Now yesterday this was the main news stories dominated the hockey headlines. No big surprise. Uh, we talked about it in a video when the news first broke. Uh, we talked about it a little bit further in the second video of the day with some further updates. And we have uh, some more comments, some more uh, things to kind of tag on to it here today. Uh, of course, we found out that uh, Joel Quenville, new currently head coach of the Florida Panthers, former coach of the Hawks, and Kevin Dayoff, who is a former assistant GM with the Hawks, the current GM of the Jets, who were both basically uh, implicated here in this investigation results um, are going to be having meetings with Gary Bettman. Now we know when those are going to be. Uh, Joel Quenville is going to be meeting with uh, Bettman uh, tomorrow on Thursday in New York, uh, and Cheval Dayoff will be meeting with Gary Bettman on Monday. So it's uh, difficult to say what the outcome here is going to be. But if you look at the uh, statement from Stan Bowman that came out yesterday after everything first came out, essentially Bowman says that, yeah, you know what, I made some mistakes, but he basically threw his boss, which was John McDonough, 
under the bus and said it was all his fault and that he thought his superior was looking after things and he wasn't. So he didn't really own up to it, take any responsibility. He technically wasn't fired, which I'm disappointed with. Um, And in this case, uh, I would be quite surprised if Quenville and Chevy kind of take the same road. The the path's already been set here that they can kind of say the same thing. Now, they both put out statements uh, in the offseason when this first came to light because of investigative journalists like Rick Westhead and Katie Strang that they didn't know anything about it. And this is the first they heard of it and that they would cooperate if they're asked anything in an investigation. Well, they were interviewed in an investigation. They did cooperate, but they lied as far as what they knew because they were a part of the meeting that happened ahead of the Stanley Cup final. And Joel Quenville himself in this report has acknowledged that he was really worried about it becoming a distraction uh, from the Stanley Cup final winning a Stanley Cup. So to me, that's an incredibly bad look. You were more concerned about winning. And I understand as a head coach of a hockey team and deep in the playoffs, you're going for a cup. Sure, it's a big deal. But we're talking about people and people's lives and this direct impact. Uh, If I found out that one of my coaches was potentially abusing one of the players. I don't care how uh, important a player is or where they rank on my depth charts. That would infuriate me, and I'd want him gone. The other thing about this as well with Quenville is not only did he, uh, was he more concerned about the distraction, he gave uh, Aldrich, the, uh, the video coach who was accused here, a positive review at the end of the season. By the time the season was done, he was well aware of the accusations. And of course, the Blackhawks gave him the option to resign or face an investigation, so he resigns. So he thought he was probably getting off scot-free. After the original complaints were received, they didn't do anything about it to stop it. Nothing was brought to HR for three weeks. During that time frame, there was another situation with another Blackhawks intern that he had inappropriate interaction with. And then he went on to, uh, you know, abuse and be convicted in his next place of employment at a high school. Like, come on. Like, so to me, I don't understand how the Florida Panthers can have Joel Quenville behind the bench tonight while this is ongoing. And personally, I just don't see how the league cannot suspend him or have him fired because that's just ridiculous. Now, when it comes to shovel day off again, like I guarantee they're probably going to take that out of, well, you know what? Even though I was a part of this meeting and I heard what was being accused, it, you know, there was plenty of people ranking higher than me uh, that I expected them to be doing the right thing, and they didn't, right? So, I'll, uh, in a way, I think they should both have severe consequences. I have my concerns that there won't be, though. Um, and like I said, the, the, as I talked about yesterday in the second video, uh, the fine of $2 million, that's a slap on the rest. The Blackhawks average a $2 million profit per home game. So, like, they covered up abuse. Like, this is ridiculous on how it was handled. So um, as much as it's nice to see consequences and some form of justice, uh, the NHL is not taking this seriously enough, in my opinion. We also learned that one of the top defensemen at the time, Duncan Keith, who's now with the Oilers, was not interviewed as part of the uh, investigation. Uh, he was asked about things in the media availability today. Uh, he claimed, again, like most people have said, that he had no prior knowledge of the situation. He obviously said he felt bad for the player that had to endure this. Said a lot of right things, but hard to imagine that he couldn't have heard about it and didn't know anything until things were brought to light. That that I find quite surprising, considering there were some that said the whole locker room was aware of it and that uh, one of the players involved here was even taunted on the ice um, about it. So... I'm not completely buying that statement, but I can't come out and call him a liar because I obviously wasn't there, don't know what he knows or don't know, and I understand why he probably doesn't want to get into it. Um, but, yeah, hard to imagine. Alex DeBrinkett, though, did make a statement that I was quite happy with. I, I honestly think uh, more players, I'd like to see this be more common here, but he said that it was a big change, and there's probably a change that needed to happen. Obviously, Alex DeBrinkett wasn't part of the 2010 Cup winning team. Uh, He was barely a teenager at the time. Um, Quite obviously, one of the younger players. But it's nice to see him acknowledge that change was needed and that, you know, clearly how things were handled were not right. Meanwhile, back uh, before the season started, when there was an interview from Captain Jonathan Taves, uh, who, you know, was a well-respected guy, I was very disappointed with his remarks where he said that he was... Very, I can't remember the exact words, so I'm paraphrasing here, but it was something along the lines of being very annoyed 
with the player that was speaking out. Like he was just kind of, you know, didn't understand why this was becoming such a big deal all these years later. Like he, he didn't speak out against anything and, you know, for players like him to be leaders on that team, to not say anything while things were going on. Ah, uh, that's, that's, that's a problem for me as well. Uh, another thing too, obviously Stan Bowman is out as GM in Chicago. There's plenty of talk about who might replace him. There's some talk about maybe a guy like Jeff Gordon getting an opportunity. Could they consider bringing back a guy like Eddie Olchuk as a president, perhaps team president? Obviously, they need guys that can be good with the community. They need guys that can help repair the image of the team. And uh, Gorton was a well-respected GM in New York who was let go under odd circumstances by many people's opinion. So they could be a couple of guys that might get involved there uh, by the Hawks. I'm sure they're going to take their time here. They're not going to rush into hiring anybody. Of course, Olchek has ties to the organization as well from the past. So might not be a terrible idea if either guy is interested in those roles, uh, Bill Guerin apparently is being uh, rumored to maybe be a replacement for um, Bowman at Team USA. But I'll remind you as well that, you know, we don't have anything bad to say about Guerin right now. But there is another pending investigation uh, against the Penguins organization from a former assistant coach who alleges that another coach sexually harassed his wife. Uh, and, of course, Guerin at the time was the GM for the minor league team that they were uh, coaching with. So he was an assistant GM with Pittsburgh who oversaw the American Hockey League team. And there's some accusations there about things not being done. So, you know, clearly that's still in its other stages. We don't have investigation results or anything. But I've seen some comments online saying, you know, one abuse cover-up uh, guy replacing another. Uh, and we can't say that about Garen today. But there is that pending. I would think after everything that went down, that they would go in a different direction unless he's cleared of that. Uh, to me, there's a prime example of somebody who could be that guy. To two-time winning GM of the year, Lou Lamarillo, maybe. You know, just saying. Maybe it might be a good choice. Uh, you know, nobody has really at this point anything against Lou. There's no investigations pending against him. He's uh, been the best GM in the league the last couple of years. Might want to give him a shot. Now, before we jump into the trade talk of the day, I do need to pause for a moment and acknowledge our channel sponsor, Manscaped. Top Shelf Hockey is proud to be sponsored by Manscaped. And guess what? Hockey fans are buzzing because hockey is back. Want to know what else is buzzing? The Lawnmower 4.0 from our friends at Manscaped, who are the global leaders in male grooming, trusted by over 2 million men worldwide. I highly recommend the Performance Package 4.0, which includes their new state-of-the-art lawnmower 4.0, as well as some other great features. The lawnmower itself has a 7,000 RPM motor, a new multifunction switch that can engage as a travel lock, gives you the ability to turn on an LED spotlight as well for a more precise shave. Uh, also, as I've mentioned on numerous occasions before, Manscaped is about much more than just a trimmer. They have everything, all aspects aspects covered and male grooming including some great formulations like their brand new ultra premium body wash to keep you smelling great all day long it's certainly a big hit here i absolutely love it they also have other exfoliators and gels to keep all aspects of your grooming needs covered i highly recommend you check out manscape.com use promo code tsh for 20 percent off and free shipping that's 20 percent off and free shipping at manscape.com using promo code tsh so thanks very much for watching that promotional content. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, I do want to talk about Eric Brandstrom today. Now, uh, Brandstrom's a player in Ottawa uh, who some I know some fans are frustrated with his lack of opportunity. Uh, we did get word that he's changed his agent. So he's now being represented by Newport Sports. Quite often when players change agents, there's usually something about their hockey life they're unhappy with. Sometimes it's the agent themselves, but a lot of it can be related to what other things with the team and things that they want and they maybe feel another agency will fight harder for them or do a better job at getting them what they want. So with the fact that Brandstrom has been mentioned in the rumor mill as a potential player that the Senators might consider trading to bring in some help at the center position, he's a player that's uh, somewhat polarizing in a sense that, you know, some people view him as being this high-end prospect. Other people feel that he's not going to be able to live up to that kind of status and that it's, you know, at this point, even though he's the prize return in the Mark Stone trade, that it's not going to be as high end of a player as many had hoped. Um, 
And at this point, he might be looking for a new opportunity. We don't have any confirmation that he's requested a trade, but generally when you see these things, it leads to that. So there's already some chatter around about that possibility. So again, we'll see if anything comes from this and if it could result in a departure from the Sens organization here in the short term. Now, of course, we do want to talk again about Jack Eichel. Now, to some of you who like to leave comments every time we have the Eichel conversation saying, you had him going to every team in the league. You know what? Every time there's Eichel news, we talk about it. That's what we do here. I'm kind of sick of those comments, to be completely honest. I don't have Jack Eichel going anywhere. We report on what's out there from NHL insiders. We offer an analysis. I ask for your opinion. I give mine. We talk about it. That's what we do. And yes, I felt the need to get that off my chest because the Eichel comments sometimes drive me a little bit bonkers. Now, the latest on Jack Eichel. We know that Elliot Friedman has made reports recently that uh, there could be a grievance filed here in the short term. That obviously is kind of helping trade talks pick up again. There were some developments over the course of the weekend and early part of the week, apparently with the Vegas Golden Knights making another push to possibly acquire the All-Star Center here and really bolster their lineup later on. Of course, this is all going to be dependent on him getting his uh, disc replacement surgery as opposed to the fusion surgery. At this point, considering how long things have drug on here, if he has to go with the spinal fusion, then that's going to be putting him out for the entire season. He won't play this year at all. But with the disc replacement surgery that he wants, the recovery time is looking about two to three months. So you basically, you know, eight to 12 weeks, but maybe that 10 week span would be when he would play. If he can get that soon, he could be playing second half of the season. That's a real possibility here. So teams are kind of making their last bit of push because they know if it goes the, the route of a grievance, that's really going to delay possibly getting a deal done. I'm not sure how long a grievance would take to get a result from it. Uh, we don't know at that point if the, if, the, if the player and the agent win, then they may have to go through everything to be recovered before he even gets a trade, right? So it could really delay things. Uh, teams, if they're willing to pony up the asking price or close to it to get a deal done now, it you know it's a, kind of one of those pressure points that I've hit. And between Frank Saravalli uh, and others out there saying that things have kind of changed a little bit, but on dailyfaceoff.com, we have an article from Frank talking about this. Uh, and essentially, I've heard other insiders mention it too, that if they're willing to put guys like Peyton Krebs and Nick Hag on the table, that's going to drastically change things and really enhance the possibility here of getting a deal done in the Knights' favor. Obviously, they would have to trade out some salary. and Many feel like Riley Smith's a possibility, or even Evgeny Dodonov, who was kind of slowly having a hard time fitting in there as well. He got uh, signed as a... Uh, he signed with the Sens last year as a free agent after uh, having a few years of playing with Sasha Barkov. So if getting Dodonov would make sense for them to move out some money. Obviously, uh, Eichel could go on long-term injury reserve until he's done his uh, recovery process. They have Pacioretty on LTIR right now. Stone could possibly end up there too. Um, and it might be a situation where they might have to try to tread water with what they have. And they could have a big infusion of talent coming back later into the season. Thankfully for Vegas, they're in a Pacific division that's not considered to be super strong and if they're remotely in the mix uh, later on well these guys get healthy they should be able to make a good run for it and still have a chance to not only be a playoff team but possibly you know be one of the top one or two teams in the division so until a deal is done we don't know for sure but it sure seems like right now vegas has become the new favorite and is really pushing hard towards a deal i mean elliot friedman and others have even mentioned lately that Anaheim is a team that has been kind of considered one of the front line contenders for quite some time, and things have been quiet there as of late. Uh, there's not as much chatter around the Ducks. We've heard about the Flames, the Wild, the Rangers, the Kings. All these other teams have been kind of in and out a lot. Um, but right now, it seems like Vegas is the main one making a push. But there's certainly others out there in the mix as well. Like I said, I think the whole idea around a grievance being filed is kind of pushing things to try to get the deal done before that happens so they can hopefully get him into their lineup sooner than later so let me know your thoughts on potential deal of eichel going to vegas wouldn't even be shocked if there's a third team involved to retain some salary if vegas cannot get buffalo to do that as part of the deal as well that's also another scenario to consider a possibility let me know your thoughts down below in the comments we'll discuss further if you're new to this channel make sure you subscribe and stick around we'll keep you up to date with all the latest news rumors and analysis in all 32 nhl teams thank you for watching and i'll catch you next time Bye.